Now, Nicole Kading, I'm going to get out of this conversation. Nicole is the Vice President of Policy Promotion and Economist for the National Taxpayers Union Foundation. We like these people, Nicole. Welcome to Mornings on the Mall. Good morning. All right, so I keep hearing numbers like $800 billion, and we're going to give every American $1,000 a month until we're through this. Um, a lot of money uh, being thrown around. It's all my money. Uh, what happens with this when it comes time to pay all this back, or do we just add it to the debt and move on? That will be a big question for Congress as they debate uh, this, what would be the third supplemental spending bill uh, to, confront, to confront the coronavirus. Uh, in some ways, we're getting a little bit of a reprieve. Bond markets have driven interest rates down to effectively negative interest rates when we encounter uh, inflation. So that makes it a little easier to finance this in the short run. But, of course, we will need to pay that principal back here at some point. Otherwise, it gets folded into the ever-increasing federal debt. Yeah. Right. But this is, you know, this is one of those times where we do turn to the government and say, OK, you've got the resources to help us uh, get through this. What kind of uh, options does the government have to help the average American, especially one who is going to be put out of work potentially for some time, uh, get through this thing? Yeah, I do think it's important for fiscal conservatives to support some efforts by Congress to, to weigh in here. Right? The way to think about this is. We're, in essence, trying to put the economy into a recession because we want individuals to stay home and we want businesses to close. But we want this to be a short recession, and we want people to bounce back very quickly. But that means that we need to provide some support to the individuals and affected businesses, the bartenders and the waitresses and the people that work at hotels and work in the travel industry. And we need to help the small businesses, the restaurants, the bars, the gyms, the movie theaters that are staying home. But that doesn't mean that we should use it as a way to pass every pet project we've had. Right. Uh, the way I've thought about this is if, if you are proposing something you would have proposed six months from now, that's probably not what we need to be doing right now. Oh, that's a really good way to look at that. You should be in Congress. Um because they love they love their their pet projects. So we we were we were talking to some listeners earlier and asking them how this is affecting them and we heard from a business owner who said he has several locations around the area for his uh shoe repair service. And people aren't coming in because they're not going to work and they usually drop their shoes off on the way to work and they pick them up on their way home and that's not happening. He has to call landlords now to try to work out some kind of either loan or payment or something along those lines. The landlord in turn you know, the landlord needs the money, I'm sure, to pay off bills as well. That's why they're, they're landlords. They use this, this as a source of income. I don't know how the government helps us with things like that. You can't legislate, or can you, legislate how people run their personal business as far as collecting debt and money owed them and, and so on. There's a few things the federal government can do. The first thing that I've been suggesting is actually delaying tax payments. So April 15th is important for individuals. It's when we have to file our tax returns. But it's also when businesses make their first estimated tax payment for 2020. We should delay that a few months and give them a little bit of a cash cushion. SBA is saying that it's going to increase its loans that it traditionally gives during during natural disasters to businesses like the shoe repair. Um, there's also private market solutions. Banks have actually been fairly good about saying that if customers are affected and need to delay debt obligation payments, they can call and get some reprieve. And that's partly why the Federal Reserve acted over the weekend to support the banks financially to make sure that they could facilitate those kind of private market solutions. But there's a lot that Congress can do. Uh, I think we just need to be careful about supporting things like building more bridges right now. We can debate infrastructure, but this isn't the moment to do that. Well, given how much people have to spend specifically on the keeping a roof over their head, that's a huge payment. I mean, that's a nice thing to hear that some banks are doing that. I'd like to see a more organized structure on that, uh, that banks are providing maybe a mortgage holiday for a month and saying, hey, no interest accrued. You know, you'll just take one month off from this thing and then we're back in action uh, or or more for that matter. And the government could play a role in that. Right, Nicole? I mean, they, you know, they could pass legislation today saying, hey, everyone gets a one month mortgage and rent holiday. And in turn, the person who was supposed to collect that payment can turn around and write off the value of that payment in the next year's taxes. Yeah, and that's actually 
actually something that it, it, we should talk about as well. And, and while I'm a big fan of what Congress did with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, I do think there's a provision that Congress needs to reinvestigate. Uh, and that has to do with the way that businesses handle when they're in a loss position. Uh, used to be that if a business was in a lost position, they had no tax liability. But one of the ways that we paid for the TCJA is we put a limit on that. And so businesses could have a loss, but they still actually will have a tax liability. I think at least for the 2020 tax year, we need to lift that cap and make sure that businesses aren't paying taxes when they didn't have any income this year. You know, as we talk about these different ways of handling this, I, I just see Congress and I see two schools of thought. The left wants to give everybody money. The left says, yo, oh, $1,000 for every American every month, as long as we're in this crisis, we have to give people money. They don't like the idea of tax cuts. That's what the president had floated, uh, some kind of tax holiday or delaying taxes uh, when, when they're due, that type of thing. That's what the president wants to do. That's a more Republican approach. Democrats want to hand money out. Which one, though, in, it would be more effective in helping Americans? So I actually am not a fan quite of either approach. And here's why. The problem with giving everyone $1,000 is that, frankly, not some, some of us don't need it. I don't need a $1,000 check right now. Uh, I'm able to work from home, as is my husband. My income is the same. What I would rather do is increase that $1,000 and give it to the folks that need it. Right. On the payroll tax side, partly it's timing. It's actually, while it's quick to do a payroll tax cut, it slowly trickles out because it's only when individuals get paid. What I would rather do, again, thinking about these affected businesses and cash flow, is I'd rather actually just scrap the payroll tax on the employer side and say that the employer side of the payroll taxes doesn't have to be paid for the next several months. Again, it gives businesses just a little bit of extra cash cushion. And if we can do that, that reduces their incentive to lay off their workers or to reduce hours. Again, we just want to make sure that we can support the individuals and businesses that need it for the next couple months so that when things start to go back to normal, they're ready and they haven't had to close their doors due to a decision that wasn't theirs. This isn't this isn't like 2008 where we had people that made bad business decisions and they paid the price. These are individuals that really couldn't plan for this scenario right. and are being affected in a way that that's really not their fault. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, Nicole Kading, Vice President of the Policy, a uh, Policy Promotion and Economist for the National Taxpayers Union Foundation. I hope Congress is listening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. 715. 